Good evening, Derby people. You are here at the 2018 Junior Roller Derby Association Championships. This is the last bout of this weekend. This is the championship of the Open Division. We have a matchup between the Santa Cruz Derby Groms Gromshells and the Seattle Derby Brats Galaxy Girls. My name is Bobby Narco. I'm joined by Tool Time. Nice to be working with you again, Bobby. Absolutely. But, uh, quick correction. This is the female division. The open one was the first one that we had. Well, it's good to get that first mistake out of the way. Yeah, now the jitters are out. <laughs> Our producer today is going to be ironic. He's helping us out. Uh, um, tell you a little bit about how these teams got here. Santa Cruz had a round one bye. Uh, they beat Rose in the uh, quarterfinals, and they beat the Los Anarchists in the semifinals. Uh, for Seattle, they beat Gotham. Uh, also had a first round bye. They beat Gotham in the semifinals, and they beat uh, uh, in the quarterfinals, and they beat Angel City in the semifinals. Absolutely, and great games they were, and we thank you for joining us on WFTDA.TV for watching it. But this, for those who watched it last year, this is just a sweet repeat of last year's 2017 JRDA championships because they played each other last year, and I had the pleasure of announcing them. Santa Cruz giving a lot of excitement for their game, so a big shout-out to them. But this is not the last time these two teams met. In fact, this is the third meeting this year for these two teams. There was a meeting in April uh, at the SoCal Shakedown where Seattle prevailed 238 to 210. Then a month later in May um, at Big O in Oregon, Santa Cruz won 222 to 155. So met twice this year and they're already one and one. Absolutely, and last year Seattle did take the win with some very amazing roller derby, but Santa Cruz just putting in a lot of fight. It's going to be great to see these two skate, but they are by no means new to roller derby, it's especially here at JRDA tournaments. And not new to another, new to each other either. Absolutely. Santa Cruz comes in with a record of four and one. Uh, they are the second seed and ranked second. Can you tell us what their season was like, uh, Tool Time? For Santa Cruz in April, they played Gotham, where they won 338 to 107. It, the same day, they played Seattle and lost that one, as you mentioned earlier. Then the next day after that, on April 8th, they played Inland Northwest, where they won 261 to 195. And then the month later, they played against Seattle. Again. They played against Seattle, and that's the one they won. And then the next day they played against Angel City and won that one. Oh. What do we have for uh, Seattle, Bobby? Seattle's been at 7-1. Uh, Can you tell us who, uh, just who they beat? Who did Seattle beat? Seattle is beating Lo Lo Los Anarchists, Rose City, Inland Northwest. The games they played with Santa Cruz, Gotham, and Angel City. They played Lo Rose City twice this season as well as Santa Cruz. And we do have a couple of uh, skaters that we may be see, we'll be seeing tomorrow, don't we? Yeah, definitely some skaters going to be skating at the uh, Junior Roller Derby Association World Cup. Very excited about that. Um, uh, all coming from the Seattle Derby Brats, uh, from the Wheels of Mass, Dis uh, Wheels of Mass Destruction, uh, skating for USA West, Threatening Thunder skating for USA West, Afro Jamarai skating for USA West, Fist Fight skating for USA West, and Amihalator skating for USA West. And while we go to the track, we have an excellent shot of Santa Cruz and a show of solidarity. This is a big game for them, but one they are accustomed to. As I said earlier, they played each other last year. This is going to be an excellent game. And again, we thank you for joining us. I'm going to take you through the officials today. We have Emma Goldmangle, Maya Culprit, Professor Murder, Sarah Dactyl, Wendy Blessing, Beckon Hader, Accidental Doll, Damon Mistress, TBD, Admiral Mayhem, Harry Pitfall, BMD, Zebroar, Tim the Ref, Steel City Kitty, Ref Metal, and Chefferie. Tool time, you want to take us through Santa Cruz? I sure do. For 0 0, we have Mini Mayhem, 101, Bruzella DeVille, number 15, Bonnie and Collide, 152, Mocking Jam, number 22, Kenny the Shark, number 26, Lil Killa, and the team captain, number 30, Cerberus, number 53, Sugar Smacks, number 62, T Ryan. Number 72, Pain Jane. Number 80, Sunkiss. Number 91, Hit Wanda. 
number 91, Kitty Wales, and number 99, Marinator. Coaches for Santa Cruz are I'm a Hot Mess, Neo Scorin, and Adrian's Revenge. And uh, Tool Time, you want to take us through the Seattle roster? Absolutely. For 0-2-1, we have the Iron Rabbit, number 10, Wheels of Mass Destruction, 1,000, Deathena. Number 15, Threatening Thunder, 180, Rival E. Number 20, Bella DeBrawl. Number 23, Afro Jamurai. Number 29, Anita Gitcha. Number 411, Fist Fight. Number 66, Frank the Bunny. 722, Rashid. Number 789, 7Skate9. An excellent play on words on there. Number 8, Brandy O'Flyer. Number 80, Matt Taco. And number 911, Annihilate Her. And uh, we're in, a, in the, on the game now. Coaches for Seattle are Devil Inside, Luna Negra, and E. Like. First penalty of the game is a forearm on the black jammer. Uh, so Santa Cruz uh, jammer, Bruzella DeVille in the penalty box. Seattle jammer is threatening thunder, picking up lead. And the coaches for Santa Cruz is I'm a hot mess, Neo Siren, Adrian's Revenge, and Victoria Mayhem. And I apologize if I said Neo's name wrong, but <laughs> I, was, I was right in spirit. And the first pass, putting five on the board for Seattle. And we have our blocker for Santa Cruz standing in the penalty box, ready to get back out there. And by blocker, you mean jammer. Ah, you are correct, sir. Scoring pass completed, all five points, and the jam is called. Initial pass not completed um, by the Santa Cruz jammer. So heading into uh, jam number two, with first blood, 10 points for Seattle, a double grand slam. We would love it if the cameraman each and every jam would just give us a little zoom on those jammers so we can tell who they are. The camera operator, pardon. Thank you, camera operator. We appreciate it. That looks like number 80 for Santa Cruz. And number 180 for uh, Seattle. So that's Sun Kissed. And Rival E, Rival and E with your lead jam on the inside of the, of the track. Scoreboard showing the jammer is Cerberus. No, it, it was to have been corrected. Rival E getting the lead for Seattle. No, Rival E is the lead jammer. It says the Santa Cruz jammer was Cerberus. Oh, yes, you're correct. I may be wrong. So, see, I've got my mistake out of the way. <laughs> there you go. Phew. Now we're going to be flawless the rest of the time. <laughs> so, uh, nothing, nothing. Our first scoreless jam here in jam number two. Those jammers, there you go. It looks like number 20 for Seattle. That's Bella de Brawl. Bella de Brawl up here announcing with us earlier today. That was a real treat. Absolutely. I got a great call in with her. 62 is the uh, Black Jammer trying. Excellent recycling by Seattle, bringing back Santa Cruz's Jammer. For those of you uh, who are wondering what a Grom shell is, uh, Grom is a surfing term for a young surfer who just shreds it. Bella de Ball picks up Lee Jammer. That's two leads in a row for Seattle. Oh, three straight jams in a row. Ah, Thank yes. you, Ironic. Forearm yeah. penalty coming in. Who's leaving on the forearm? That's going to be the Santa Cruz pivot. So Santa Cruz is going to be down one blocker. Someone needs to tell the pivot on the line that. And the coaches for Santa Cruz remedying the situation now. Out there on the jammer line. That looks like Bruzella DeVille out there for Santa Cruz. And number 15. For Threatening Thunder. Thank you. Here we go. An attempt on the outside by Santa Cruz, an attempt on the inside by Seattle, both jammers, and oh. Track cut, who's on track the Track cut on Santa Cruz. That's gonna make this a power jam for Seattle. So yeah, Santa Cruz's pivot standing in the penalty box. Seattle's jammers gets up. Oh, 
knocked out there. No pass, no penalty. I get knocked out, but I get up again. That is certainly true for these skaters out here. Directional play penalty coming in, sending one of the uh, Santa Cruz skaters to the penalty box. So far, threatening Thunder, putting four on the board for Seattle. Low block, but a track cut penalty, sorry, sent, uh, called on one of the Seattle skaters. And that's the jam. Nine-point jam so far for Seattle, taking a comfortable leave, lead of 22. But yeah. Santa Cruz still in this, definitely doing a lot of work this weekend at Champs here in Philadelphia. Yeah, just five minutes gone, so... Uh, Santa Cruz needs to put some points on the board, still looking for their first score of the game and trying to get those points. And that the, looks like 152 for Sits. Oh, no. It's I'm the gonna, black captain. We know that. It's Cerberus. Yes, yes thank you. And 0-2-1 on the white team, the Iron Rabbit. Lead jam to the Iron Rabbit. Uh, all the leads have gone to Seattle so far. And there have been no jams without a lead jammer. Santa Cruz through the initial pass as the Seattle gets recycled back into the pack. Yeah, nice wall at the back of the pack by, uh, Sia uh, by Santa Cruz. Forcing the call off, no points. Is that our second scoreless jam, Ironic? Jam two was scoreless? Yes. Ironic giving us the thumbs up. And what a pleasure it is to have a producer such as Ironic for this one, helping us keep track because you can keep it, that information in your head. It leaves the moment it comes in. Yeah, five in a row. Uh, number 150 is the jammer for the white team. No, that's not right. Number 180 is the jammer for the black uh, for the white team. That's rival E and Tryon jamming for Santa Cruz. Black 62, first lead jam of the game for Santa Cruz. And the crowd reacts. All California in the uh, bronze medal round and uh, California showing in the championship round as well of the female division. We got a high block on the skater that's leaving. And rival E is in retrograde, rejoining that pack on the backstretch. Excellent walls put up by the Grom shells off a of turn three. Seattle gets through, doesn't have lead jam, and I think that's the first time, first time. Seattle hasn't gotten the lead. And the first lead for Santa Cruz. Absolutely. So five on the board. Seattle Cruz, uh, Santa Cruz will not get shut out. That is the highest jam of the game for Santa Cruz. Highest jam of the game for Seattle was 10. Was 10 in jam number one. Out on the jammer line right now, white 20 is Bella de Brawl. And a 101 on the black team is Bruzella DeVille. So uh, a B to something for each team. <laughs> Bruzella DeVille and Bella de Brawl. Blocker nice. for Santa Cruz Hit. standing. Oh, Santa Cruz with their first lead jam. Second. Um, Second, yes, you're right. And a big hit by the Santa Cruz pivot number 26, Lil Killa. So now Santa Cruz wants to string five lead jams in a row and balance things out. Oh, nice apex leap. Didn't stick to landing, but didn't cut anybody either, so able to get back up and continue skating. Excellent skating on that one, staying in play. An excellent blocking, and we have a forearm called so on Santa Cruz. That's going to make this a power jam for Seattle. Our first two-minute jam. All right, let's see what Seattle has to do. Still no scores, uh, points on the boards for this Yeah, jam. Seattle's still on the initial. And just some information on Bruzella. Only three jams in, but got a penalty on each one. And we've seen a lot of teams get, get hurt by penalties. Santa Cruz leaving their pivot on a forearm. Speaking of penalties, number 26, Lil Killa to the penalty box on the forearm. And Santa Cruz sending their, block, their jammer to the penalty box again for a back block. That's going to keep this uh, power jam for C another power jam for Seattle. Uh, Seattle loses a skater to the penalty box on a direction of play. Yeah. 
Excellent blocking off a of turn three by number 22 from Santa Cruz. I think that was a 22. I could be wrong, but still excellent blocking. Yes, that was 22. That is Kenny the Shark, Kenny the Shark. doing some work off a of turn three. So another five points for Santa Cruz ties their highest jam of the game, brings them up to 10 points. Four points picked up by Seattle puts them at 26. Now, is this the first one time we've seen Santa Cruz outscore Seattle? Well, except for the jam where they got a 5 No, this is the second time. Yes, you're correct. First time uh, they've outscored them where they both scored. Yes, thank you. There you go. Cerberus against Threatening Thunder. And picking up lead jam is uh, Cerberus. Guardian of the Gates of Hell. <laughs> well, she's certainly unleashing some on uh, these Seattle walls as she re-engages the pack. And calls off the jam. Gets one point on the board. Seattle with her pivot in the penalty box. Uh, no, that's the Santa Cruz pivot in the penalty yes, box. Yes, thank you. That's why it's only one point, 11 for Santa Cruz. Zero makes uh, keeps Seattle at 26. And I apologize to the crowd listening. I'm a little uh, frazzled by this game. You're it has been an amazing cool time. weekend of Derby. Holy cow, it has. And we got more Derby coming up right after this. We're going to have the Junior Ruler Derby Association World Cup the next two days. This is, the last, this is the last game of this tournament, absolutely. but then an immediate on its heels the next tournament. And right now we have Iron Rabbit out there for Seattle going up against Tryon for Santa Cruz. Iron Rabbit forced to the infield, has to go all the way back. Uh, Tryon stuck behind a, a rotating wheel of blockers, a rotating wedge of blockers now. And finally gets by, picks up lead jam. Seattle taking the cover off of the helmet. Possible stash or pass go going on. Penalty coming in from the outside. That's a forearm. Who's it on? It's on the skater that's leaving. Uh, number 110? 120? Don't guess, Bobby. That is either Wheels of Mass Destruction. Oh, 100. yes, that is 100. 1,000. 1,000, 1000 Dathina. Meanwhile, on the track, some scoring going on. Santa Cruz right back in this game with two grand slams and going back for thirds. Excellent blocking by Seattle. Tryon has an appetite for points. Calls off the jam, but picks up that third grand slam. We have a one-point game. Oh, we have a tie game, 26 to 26. Never How? count out Santa Cruz, especially since we've seen so many lead changes yeah. today as well as yesterday. Seattle starting off strong with a 10-point jam at the beginning, getting a 22-point and holding that for a while, and that now we have got a neck-and-neck -neck game. Yeah, Santa Cruz comes surfing right back. It could not be any closer. Mathematically, that is a truism. Jammers are trying for Santa Cruz. And uh, number 180, rival E for Seattle. Seattle yeah, sending a blocker to the penalty box. I'm wrong. The jammer for Santa Cruz is Marinator. You are watching the 2018 Junior Roller Derby World uh, Junior Roller Derby Association Championships. And we are very excited about that. If you're excited too, be sure to let us know on Twitter with hashtag talk to JRDA. That's hashtag the number two JRDA. Right now, with Seattle getting a three-point lead, still under 17 minutes left in this half. Seattle down one blocker as we get started with Cerberus for Santa Cruz going up against Threatening Thunder for Seattle. Lead jammer, Santa Cruz. Is that five of the last six, ironic? Five of the last six lead jams have gone to Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz sending their pivot, number 28, to the penalty box. Sorry, number 26, Lil Killa. A direction of gameplay called against Seattle's pivot, number 80, Mantaco. 
Five points on the board for Santa Cruz. Hot on the heels of the Galaxy Girls Jammer. Jam is called 35-29 in favor of uh, Santa Cruz. So lead change. Last two jams we've had lead changes. Actually, last three jams we've had lead changes. Absolutely. Excellent nine-point jam by Cerberus. If you count a tie score as a, as a lead change, and I do. <laughs> I do not know nearly as much about Derby as you do, so I well, shall never Well, the lead has argue. changed. It's gone from having a lead to not having a lead. So <laughs> I, I call it a lead change. Meanwhile, out on the track. Jammers are number 111 for the white team. Nope, that can't be. 911, a mile later. And nope, fist, fist fight for Seattle. 411. And trying for Santa Cruz. Forearm penalty. Who's leaving? That That's is number, number 23 for Seattle. That's Afro Jammerai. As Seattle's pivot comes back into play and reengages with the pack. And what did I miss, Bobby? You missed Lee Jam going to trying. Seattle through the initial pass as Scrummets re-engage. Strong hit just off of turn one. No points. How many scoreless jams have we had, Ironic? It's at least our second. It is our third scoreless jam. 35-29 in favor of Santa Cruz. 14 minutes and change left to play here in this first period. You are watching WFTDA.TV. And Seattle down one blocker at the start of this jam. We have Marinator out there for Santa Cruz against Rival E. This, I believe this is the first time we've seen Marinator out there with the star cover on, if I'm right. Uh, second? Look back maybe three or four jams on the black side. Second, Second time. right you are. Lead jam goes to Marinator. They are densely packed right up there by the pivot line. Rival E force the infield going to have to re-engage. Big a wedge. Now it's a tetrahedron at the top of the pack. Back to a wedge, brace two wall, you can call it if you want. Excellent work by the Grom shells off of turn two, pushing that strong tripod from turn one just past turn two. Both teams Amazing dedicating effort. a skater to bridging so that their blockers can keep blocking, keeping everybody at play. Pack is strung out. Now we got a pack definition issue. Failure to reform called on uh, Seattle skater. Uh, excuse me, the Mar uh, that is Santa, Santa Cruz, Cruz skater. number eighty, Sunkissed, for failing to reform. Illegal position is what we call that now. And an excellent move by Seattle's jammer, finding a hole on the inside with a quick hop. Yeah, star stash to complete the initial pass. Five more points picked up by Seattle Cruz, uh, Santa Cruz. 40 to 29, a timeout Seattle. So far, an excellent day for roller derby. We've had a lot of really great games today. We had, uh, we had Death Nella and Al B on the stream earlier today for Des Moines versus DCM. DCM taking the win on that one, I believe. Excellent game. This one's turning out to be just as good. Santa Cruz with a good lead over Seattle at 40 points. 12 minutes, 30 seconds left in, the, in this half. What have you got to say about the play we're seeing out here, Bobby? Boys, back and forth. Seattle started out really strong, but Santa Cruz has come storming back. And Santa Cruz definitely with the fire on the track right now, getting some excellent momentum, an excellent move by Seattle to call a timeout. We've seen this and talked about this a lot this weekend. It's a great opportunity to let the players take a deep breath, reevaluate and refocus, recenter. So now that Seattle's had a moment to focus, let's see what they do as we get ready for our next jam. That sparkly skirt is threatening thunder, is it not? Yes, it is. And Cerberus is the jammer for Santa Cruz. 62 with 15 points. 
Oh, number 62 on Santa Cruz trying, scoring more than any other jammer. Has 15 points, scoring more than any other jammer. Highest individual work, jam of the game to trying. Now that's trying, Bobby. It certainly is. That's not only trying, that is succeeding. Um, so Four points nothing. on the board for um, Seattle. There you go. No points on the board for Santa Cruz on that one. 11 minutes and 50-some uh, seconds left to play in the first period. Coming up next on WFTDA is the Junior Roller Derby World Cup. Then after that, we're going to head out to Kalamazoo, Michigan for the Northeast Continental Cup. Uh, weekend after that, we're going to go to Omaha, Nebraska for the Northwest Continental Cup. We'll tell you a little bit more about what's coming up on WFTD later, but right now, take us out to the track. We got a power jam for Santa Cruz as Seattle sends Bella DeBrawl to the penalty box. And Seattle sending another blocker to the penalty box. Santa Cruz with your lead jam. Courtesy of Tryon, who we were just talking about. Yep. Excellent work out there by Seattle. Swiping to the outside, bringing the skater back. Seattle's jammer now back on track, coming in with the quickness. Engages the pack just off of the jammer line. Meanwhile, Tryon still powering through, gets through and puts five on the board for Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz extending that lead now. And Seattle's jammer gets through the initial pass. Out of the box, out of the pack. And the jam is called off before any scoring can be done. Let's see if uh, Santa Cruz picks any more points on top of that five. Yes, they do, two five point passes. So that is uh, 10. Uh, that represents 20% of Santa Cruz's score. And this is the fifth power jam we've had in the first half alone. And this is the first one for Santa Cruz and definitely taking advantage of that, putting 10 on the board. And that looks like Cerberus out there for Santa Cruz. And that's the Iron Rabbit with that, uh, looks like a mask. It's a little smoked visor. Iron Rabbit picking up Lee Jammer. Uh, and a, nope, never mind. I thought he was making a signal, but Santa Cruz getting through legally through the initial pass. Santa Cruz did lose. You might have seen the penalty on Kenny the Shark. Uh, that puts Kenny in the penalty box. Santa Cruz with two blockers in the penalty box, one standing. That's going to give the advantage to Seattle on this one. Number 15 for... Seattle, that's Threatening Thunder. Threatening who, Thunder. Who will be seeing at World Cup tomorrow for U.S. West? Uh, yes. And, and we have we a, a timeout called, this time by Santa Cruz. And if you can hear it through our microphones, the crowd is going nuts in here. Gromshell's giving a, so with an amazing fan base. And Seattle with a, an excellent fan base as well, but everyone here is just supporting these amazing athletes. Even without the score, this is an amazing roller derby we've seen here this weekend, and that's on all games, not just this one. Yeah, the future of flat track roller derby is bright with the skaters that we've seen out here today. Um, telling you a little bit more about those Continental Cups we uh, mentioned earlier. Last year, there were what were called Division II playoffs. Those have been replaced this year by the Continental Cups. As we mentioned, the, uh, the Northeast Continental Cup will be in Kalamazoo, Michigan. The uh, uh, the North America East, the North America West will be in Omaha, Nebraska. And then towards the end of October, we're going to have the final Continental Cup. That's going to be in Birmingham, England, hosted by the Birmingham Blitz teams. Uh, then, of course, we have uh, what we used to call the Division I playoffs. And we're just now calling the playoffs. There's two of them. One's going to be in Acaruña, Spain, over the uh, Labor Day weekend, uh, hosted by Os Brigantias Roller Derby. And then the other uh, playoff is going to be in Atlanta, uh, hosted by the Atlanta Roller Girls. And Seattle threatening Thunder through the initial pass. No lead jam on that one. We have Seattle's pivot going to the penalty box, and lead jam is given to Santa Cruz. She calls it, 
but not before some points put on the board for Seattle. Seattle picks up four, brings them up to 41. And so far in this game, we've had only one jam that both teams have scored. That just shows the level of roller derby we are at. Only nine point difference in this game so far with just under eight and a half minutes left. That was that 5-4 jam uh, where Santa Cruz got five and Seattle got four. Back in maybe jam number seven, jam number eight. Jam number seven. Ironic on the ball. Frank the Bunny on the ball for Seattle, going up against Tryon for Santa Cruz. Just amazing blocking going on by both sides as Santa Cruz and Seattle are down one blocker. Santa Cruz sending their blocker back into play as she helps bridge as the jammer is recycled. A strong hit just off of turn one. High block called on Santa Cruz. That's going to make this a power jam for Frank the Bunny. Jammer now sitting in the penalty New box. New jammer. We four. do have a cover pass. Number That's 4 one, one What's the 4 one, one on that? The 4 one, one on that is we have a successful cover pass off to the team captain fist fight. Through the initial pass. Santa Cruz's jammer is standing. Oh, big hit at the top of the pack. That's by Minnie Mayhem, living up to that name for Santa Cruz, doing a great job holding up and getting a penalty kill, but still putting four points on the board is fist fight for Seattle. Frank the Bunny with five. Oh, yeah, you're right, fist fight, my bad. You were right, the screen is wrong. And for those listening at home, that is the first time in this half that I have been right and Narco has been wrong. Well, I've been wrong, I've been wrong before, <laughs> I'll be wrong again. Uh, double zero, Mini Mayhem, the pivot for Santa Cruz, heading to the penalty box on a low block. We have a lead change. Nope, Santa Cruz picked up points as well. It's a one point game, 54 to 53. 12 what points. an apex jump on that one. 4 1 1 coming in. Jam is off. What a jam that was. 12 points for Seattle to Santa Cruz's six. Santa Cruz coach, you don't see it on the screen, but the Santa Cruz coach is strongly suggesting a misconduct penalty to the infield, but uh, the, they were having none of it. So a one point, uh, three point game, Santa Cruz picked up six, Seattle picked up 12. 12 points is the highest jam of the game for Seattle. And we have an official review uh, requested by, whose official review That's is it? Santa Cruz. from Santa Cruz. Just under six minutes left in this half. Now we've been talking about Junior World Cup that's coming up tomorrow. We have a couple of skaters for Seattle as well as the ones we've seen all weekend. Five, five Seattle skaters. Exactly, so it's definitely gonna be great. And if you wanna get in on, get in on that, you can go, you, we will be streaming it live on twitch.tv Monday and Tuesday this week. Where it'll be the World Cup, and where can they go to find that to find that show? Uh, well, they can go to WFTDA or Twitch.tv backslash WFTDA. And uh, if you're thinking, "Wow, it's going to cost me a fortune," I don't know if you can afford it. As long as you have a computer, you can absolutely afford it because it is free. I can afford that. Yeah, heck yeah, I'm a kid too. <laughs> We mentioned that these teams are no strangers to one another. They're also no strangers to the champs. Uh, Seattle has gone to the championship in 2015, 2016, and 2017, taking first place every year. Uh, Santa Cruz has also gone to the championships in 2015, 16, and 17. They've improved their ranking every year. In 2015, they finished sixth. In 2016, they finished fifth. And last year, they finished second to this Seattle team. Absolutely, and as far as sanction and bouts for, the 20, for 2018, they've got an impressive record. This team, as you just said, keeps getting better and better. An excellent game right now. So far, Santa Cruz with a small lead, but this could be one of the first few times that in the female division of JRDA Tur Championships, that Seattle may take a second place. Right, right. Anything could happen. We have seen a number of lead changes uh, uh, here today and this whole week. 
oh, that's one of the great things about roller derby. You know, you think you have a powerhouse. You think you have a dynasty. Someone else is going to knock you on your heels and uh, say, oh, not so fast. And we did have that with a team that both of these teams have played, and that's Los Anarchists who took out Jacksonville early on in the weekend. Jacksonville, a staple of JRDA tur right. tournaments and championships. So that was just very impressive considering it's their first season. But right now we are back. We got Cerberus. And who do we have for Seattle, Bobby? That's Bella de Brawl. Lee Jammer going to Bella de Brawl. And joining us is Ironic with an official review. Absolutely. So as y'all saw, we saw that apex jump there that ended in that contact at the end. The official review was asking for a misconduct call right there. However, ruling will stand. All right. We have a power jam right now, which is going to devolve into a power start as the Santa Cruz jammers in the penalty box. Seattle picked up five, and we have another lead change. It is 58 to 56. Bella de Brawl was the jammer on that, ironic, and the jammer in the penalty box right now is the same jammer from the last jam. Bella de Brawl's number was number 20, uh, and the jammer in the penalty box right now, Sunkissed number 80. I'd like to thank our camera operators. They are doing fantastic work. The whole production staff here at WFTDA TV has just been phenomenal all weekend long. Absolutely. We couldn't do what we're doing right now without them. We have an excellent support staff, not only with WFTDA.TV, but with JRDA doing a great job with our officials. And what did I just miss, Bobby? <laughs> Threatening Thunder picked up lead jam for Seattle. Just, a, just over four minutes left in this half. Both teams going back and forth. Bit of a spill on turn one. Ironic, I gave you bad information. That jammer is Cerberus, not, uh, not Sunkist. So the jammer for the last two jams for Santa Cruz has been number 30, Cerberus. And Cerberus through the initial pass, re-engaging the pack, but gets called off. Four more points picked up by Seattle. Uh, three more points three picked more up by points. Seattle. Total of 61. Extends the lead, a grand slam lead in favor of the team from the Pacific Northwest. The Northwest leading the Southwest. <laughs> this crowd is definitely getting hyped as the leads keep changing back and forth. Both teams starting off with a full pack. Iron Rabbit for Seattle. Getting your lead jam. No, absolutely not. Tryon gets lead jam for Santa Cruz. Yes, thank you. That was a close one. It was indeed. Uh, I looked for the armband. That's the only reason I, I I was able to see the difference. Thank you very much. And that was a little too close for comfort for Santa Cruz, who calls it. No point scored on that one. But uh, our fourth scoreless jam. Uh, but oh, I'm sorry, I missed. What, what were you no, throwing? No, no, that was what I was going oh, to okay. point out. Our fourth scoreless jam. And an excellent strategy. You didn't score any points, but neither did anyone else as we're wrapping up the first half of this game. It looks like we have number 99 out there for Santa Cruz. That's Marinator. And that's number 100 for S Seattle. Deathina, sorry. No, 180, Rival E. And ah, yes, Rival E you. gets Lee Jammer. Those numbers are hard to see. They come by so fast, and they line up not facing us. Camera operators are doing great work, but the camera can't even see them sometimes either. Initial pass completed by Marinator. But they are seeing a lot of this great derby that we're seeing just off of turn three. Amazing effort. Boy, this period has flown by. There has been very little stoppage of play. Each team took a timeout, and there was an official review. Um, but, you know, we're just under two minutes left to play in the half. And with an 11-point lead, Seattle starting to gain some momentum. 10-point lead. 10-point lead, thank you. I can count. <laughs> All right, both teams at full strength on blockers as they line up at the pivot line. We have Cerberus going up against Bella de Brawl. Cerberus sneaks through, gets your lead jam for Santa Cruz. Got a direction of play penalty coming in on the Seattle skater that's leaving. That's number 911, Annihilator. 411, 911, that is 911, Annihilator. 
Jam is called. Let's get some points on the board. Four points picked up by Santa Cruz. Puts them at 60. No points for Seattle. Keeps them at 66. Sixes are wild on the scoreboard. Less than a minute to play here in the first period. Yes, and we just got some more information. Santa Cruz only scoring one time in the last seven jams, and that was a six-point jam. But we just had a four-point jam for Santa Cruz and zero to Seattle. Right now, we have number 15 for Seattle, Threatening Thunder, going up against trying for Santa Cruz in what may be the last jam of this half as Santa Cruz gets our lead jam. What a fabulous game. Absolutely. This is going to keep us on the edge of our seats until the end. And what did we just see, Bobby? Back block, power jam, full two-minute jam. And that's going to work in Seattle's favor as they have the six-point lead. Definitely going to put some points on the board. And if anyone can do it, it's threatening Thunder. Try and had lead but lost it. So we're going to get some free derby. The jam is now, uh, jam clock is now at zero, but we have one minute and change left to play. And then Seattle's blocker standing in the penalty box, joined by Santa Cruz's jammer and another blocker. Free derby here in the first half. Absolutely, like, and we may have we have a whole minute of it. So uh, Santa Cruz jammer uh, try and re-entering play. Uh, jam is stopped because the uh, skater got injured. And that's the jammer for Seattle. So if you uh, have questions about the awesome action that you're seeing this weekend, you can use the hashtag talk, the number two, J-R-D-A, all one word, T-A-L-K-2, J-R-D-A, to chat with us on Twitter. And don't forget to follow the Junior Roller Derby Association on Twitter using the handle at J-R-D-A underscore R-O-C-K-S because J-R-D-A rocks, rocks. And you can't underscore that enough. And you definitely have to give them the appreciation. They put skater safety above everything else. It doesn't matter what technical issues we may have up here in the booth, which we have had none. Hopefully I haven't jinxed us. <laughs> but they will stop gameplay immediately if it means a skater is hurt or injured. Right. So you got to respect someone that puts the skater safety above everything else. The medics check in on the Seattle Jammer right now. And... Who better to have over there? She's get, she's up a little bit, but who better to have you right there when you're getting checked out? But uh, our own Scott Chicken, Seattle's own announcer, the now, familiar voice has got to be comforting to Seattle out sure. there. And because this jam was called off because of an injury, it is within the referee's discretion as to whether or not they're going to have another jam. Uh, so we might yet have one more skating. And we'll know that soon, but what a game it has been so far. And this is, we've had five scoreless jams total, which is amazing. Six-point difference. We are going to go to halftime, but we will be back for the conclusion. Right now, as I said, six-point difference between Seattle and Santa Cruz. I'm Tool Time, and joining me is... I'm Bobby Narco. Our most excellent producer has been Ironic, and you are watching the 2018 Roller, uh, Junior Roller Derby Association Championships on WFTA.TV. Come on back in about eight minutes. We'll give you some statistical analysis from the first half and bring you the second half of the championship round of the female division. Welcome back to the 2018 Junior Roller Derby Association Championships. This is the last game of the championships. It is the uh, title bout in the female division. Uh, we got a great battle going on between the Santa Cruz Derby Groms Gromshells and the Seattle Derby Brats Galaxy Girls right now. Seattle leading 66 to 60. Uh, we've got some uh, excellent um, uh, stat tracking done by our producer, Ironic. Um, Santa Cruz has had a lead jam 11 times. Seattle has had lead jam 12 times. There was one jam with no lead. Um, star passes. Santa Cruz has not passed the star. Seattle passed the star one time, and that was to number 411, Fist Fight. Uh, in terms of jammer penalties, there's the biggest difference of the game. Santa Cruz has had seven jammer penalties. Seattle has only had one jammer penalty. We've had five jams that were scoreless. Uh, what can you tell us about penalties, Tool Time? Well, as far as penalties go, Seattle with the most penalties on the... No, it was... Wait. Sorry. Our notes got mixed up. 
seven for Santa Cruz with and Santa Cruz with a total of 20 penalties uh, at the start of this half. A couple of them uh, kind of high scoring. Bruce, Ella DeVille and Little Killa sitting at four. Doesn't count them out just yet, but it does, will make the second half difficult. Seattle with a total of 12 penalties total. So it's been a very clean game. Yep. Both teams staying relatively out of the penalty box. Two skaters on Seattle have three. That's Dathina and seven skate nine. Everybody else has two, one, or none. Most actually have none. Uh, second most is one. Uh, so not a lot of penalty trouble on either team. A lot and of it, clean skating. Absolutely, and it's been showing on the penalty board because we've seen a couple of games this weekend where a lot of penalties have been going to other to skaters, and those have just been free points for all the jammers that we've had out here. And with this kind of high-level roller derby, that adds up really fast. Ironic, I'm going to put you on the spot one more time. What was the highest single individual jam for Santa Cruz, and what was the highest individual single jam for Seattle? Santa Cruz high jam was 15 points. And 12. And 12, so pretty even on terms of the high mark, uh, the high water mark for both teams. Out on the jammer line right now, that is 101 on the black team, Bruzella DeVille. And number 411 for Seattle, and that is Fist Fight, the Fist team fight. captain. And a couple of notes I'd like to add. Seattle with three skaters graduating oh, junior yeah. roller derby. Four. So what a, yes, you, correct you are. What a way to go out uh, to have one of your last championships. And that's number 15, Threatening Thunder. Number 20, Bella DeBrawl. Number 411, Fistfight, Jamie Now. And number 66, Break the Bunny. We'll get to Santa Cruz in just a second. Bobby, what are we seeing here? Jam has already begun, and uh, already the jammer, one jammer forces the other out, and we're going to play this backup game. We've seen this a couple of times this weekend, and it's definitely working a great uh, way to get blockers out of the penalty box, but it's also a great way to whittle away at the clock. Yeah, a newish strategy. I don't think this game is uh, salted enough away for either team to want to burn time off the clock. Uh, that's just my personal opinion, but uh, time is your ally in a game this close. Well, it's definitely the ally now with Santa Cruz's pivot getting back into play, and we are off. Excellent strategy for Santa Cruz, but it doesn't pay off as Seattle gets the lead jam. Nice hip check at the top of the pack, forcing a blocker. Seattle trying to, uh, Santa Cruz trying to get a goat. An excellent block to the inside by Seattle, bringing back Santa Cruz's jammer. Excellent hop over number 15 from Santa Cruz, gets through, puts five on the board for Seattle. Initial pass completed by Bruzella DeVille. Great communication between the skaters and the benches all weekend long. Uh, although this crowd is loud and large and voluble, uh, they are, are, the skaters are still able to communicate with their coaches. As well as each other, and that just shows the conditioning that these coaches put their players on to not only have amazing non-verbal communication between each other, but especially the jammers, you rarely see them go a lap without looking to the bench to see if they should call it, keep going. And when there's a difficult situation coming up, they look at it again. But we have Cerberus out there again for Santa Cruz. And uh, Seattle's number 180. Uh, rival E? Rival E. Yes, Rival E. And Direction. Santa Cruz with your lead jam. Direction of play penalty sends a uh, Seattle skater to the penalty box. Number 1,000, Dathina. And Seattle through the initial pass. Santa Cruz calls it. That 14-point jam uh, was the second highest of the game since jam number five. Uh, but now it's only a 10-point lead, 74-64 in favor of Seattle. 
And as far as the C Santa Cruz, number 22, Kenny the Shark will be graduating Junior Roller Derby this year, as well as number 91, Kitty Wales. And as I said, what an amazing feather in the cap to have to be in the top two of all of Junior Roller yeah, Derby. What a way to go. What, well, if it's got to be your last game, that's a great way for it to be your last game. Although not all of our graduating skaters are skating their last game, several of the graduating skaters for Seattle are going to be in the World Cup. Out on the line right now, we have Tryon against Fist Fight. Tryon has picked up Lee Jammer for Santa Cruz. Gets through, puts five on the board for Santa Cruz. Seattle with a blocker coming out of the penalty box to re-engage with the pack. Tries to make a hole for her jammer as she breaks up a strong Grom shell wall. Meanwhile, One. Seattle responding in kind with an excellent two-person wall. Yeah, too far out in front. They had to let her go. And uh, we have a tie game. 74 to 74. And it looked like the 4-1-1 was going to be called out on a penalty, but that was, that was nixed. So that's going to put her back in. Head referee Admiral Mayhem has the ability to uh, say, no, I think that wasn't a penalty. Absolutely, and we got to give a lot of appreciation to our refs out here. They have had a long weekend, and with WFTDA.TV watching, as well as all of these skate people here, that is a tough job to have. What did I miss earlier? Uh, direction of play on Dathina, her second penalty in as many jams. Brings her up to five. Cover off, new jammer for Seattle is number 10, the Wheels of Destruction. So Excellent block on the outside by Santa Cruz as Seattle tries to regain footing to get back in. And yes, uh, cut track is called on Seattle's jammer. That's going to make this a power jam for Tryon. So that 20-point jam is already the highest jam of the game. Uh, and a lead change. And the jam is called. A timeout called by Seattle. So 25 points on the board for Santa Cruz on that jam. And we've been talking about the amazing technicians we've had making all of this possible for the folks watching at home. An excellent shot by our camera person as we saw that Seattle's blocker was blocked out, re-engaged, but there was another blocker behind, so she increased her position. Once she, while she was still down, the penalty wasn't called, but the moment she stood up, her jam ref called a right out on it, and that is gonna pay off big time for Santa Cruz with a power start. And speaking of the excellent video production we've had all weekend long by WFTDA.TV and the Junior Roller Derby Association, we want to give a big shout out to Ben, who used to be the known by the skater named Speed Bump, and Kimberly. We got to come up with a jammer uh, with a derby name for Kimberly. Kimberly's helping us out remotely from Portland, Oregon. I'm thinking of Kimberly Timbers. Portland, I, Oregon. Timber I was going to say Road Rash, but Kimberly Timbers. Yeah, she's. <laughs> Also, uh, Oregon's got a coast, and so, you know, there's pirates out there. <laughs> Kimberly Timbers. I'm, I'm campaigning for that, Kimberly. I know you're listening. <laughs> That's my vote. And I will second that vote. If you want to let us know what you think, hashtag talk to the number two JRDA for our Twitter account. Meanwhile, what are we seeing, Bobby? We're seeing Bruzella DeVille jamming against Wheels of Mass Destruction. Number 22 for Santa Cruz going to the penalty box, Kenny the Shark. This is a power jam, power start. Um, oh, no pass, no penalty, so lead is open. Wheels of mass destruction can emerge from the penalty box uh, and get lead. Tremendous apex jump. And we have a successful cover pass off to 80 for Seattle. That's, that's Mad Taco. Excellent blocking on the outside by Gromshell. Seattle responding in kind by holding up wheels on the inside of turn one. Seattle putting four on the board, courtesy of Wheels. Yeah, since there's been a star pass and Bruzella did not get lead on the first pass through, this is another two minute jam. Low block is the call, who's leaving on the low block? That, that looks like number 22 for Santa Cruz, Kenny the Shark. Kenny the Shark is the double deuce. <laughs> Boom! 
boom. Big hit at the top of the pack. Oh. Santa Cruz sending a blocker to the penalty box. Put skater down as the refs check. She is she is kneeling upwards. Yeah, wanted to get up right away, but the refs were like, Let, let's just sit here for a second. We're going to get the EMTs out there. Absolutely, and that's definitely great because I myself have taken heavy hits and hit the hit the floor hard. I've wanted to get up, but thankfully, better, clearer minds prevailed, wanting me to stay down to make sure there were no serious injuries because I may be a few, feel fine, but in a few minutes, I may not I be. I may not be, be feeling fine. If you want to propose names for Kimberly out in Portland, uh, go to uh, hashtag uh, talk to JRDA. Uh, let's get some, uh, some suggestions for uh, Kimberly's derby name. Maybe even put up a poll. If only we had a way of getting onto J to uh, seeing JRDA's Twitter account so we can have a hmm. poll put up. But how could we do that, Bobby? Oh, you kids with your uh, with your technology, with your Insta chats and your Snapgrams. I think it's something. Uh, I think it's called a Twitter. Um a Twitter account? A Twitter account? A Twitter handle? Yes. There you uh, go. I think so. That's at capital all caps JRDA underscore lowercase R O C K S. Once again, at capital JRDA underscore lowercase R O C K S. And Seattle's jammer up and in good spirits. An excellent sign as we enjoy this official timeout. Seattle going to have to sit that jammer for three jams. Uh, we got some birthdays today. Some fellow announcers, uh, the Laughing Penguin, having a birthday today. If you're listening, Laughing Penguin, happy birthday. And one of our European announcers, Grievous Bodily Harm, uh, also celebrating a, bir uh, celebrating a birthday today. Uh, uh, many happy returns to Grievous Bodily Harm. And we have some more information by our, by our amazing announcer, Ironic. We've had three star passes from Seattle, zero from Santa Cruz, twice no lead at all this half. The jam right now is threatening thunder. Cerberus jamming for Santa Cruz. Oh, look at that. Tiptoe on your toe stops around the outside like a buffalo gal. Four-point pass for Seattle. That is exactly what they need. Both teams trading scoring passes. And Seattle on the verge. Yes, yes, now breaks the century mark at 102. Santa Cruz breaking the century mark at 102. Seattle sitting on 87. Yes, thank you. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> It'll happen. It'll happen. It's been a long weekend here at JRDA Champs here in Philadelphia. Fortunately, I have Ironic with the information as our producer, and I have the trusted Bobby Narco here to help keep me straight. Want to give some love to Al B, our tournament head announcer. Oh, absolutely. Great crew assembled, uh, and then and me. <laughs> <But> <laughs> And so modest, this one. <laughs> Jammer for Santa Cruz is trying. Tryon has lead. Jammer for uh, Seattle is 4-1-1. Uh, one, one. Fist fight. Excellent work by Santa Cruz's Jammer. Calls it off, but it looked like there were four points on the board. Yes, four points. No points for Seattle. 106 to 92, 14 point lead for Santa Cruz. What a game it has been so far. We are still very close with just a how many points difference since you're the math person. 14. There we go. Helps that I just said it. <laughs> 21 minutes and change remaining here in the game. The championship match of the female division of the 2018 Junior Ruler Derby Association Championship here on WFTDA.TV. And I'm going to turn up my headset so I don't miss something like that again, Bobby. <laughs> Bruzella DeVille and Threatening Thunder are your jammers right now. Bruzella DeVille wears number 101. Threatening Thunder wears uh, number 15. Lead jam has gone to Bruzella DeVille. Threatening Excellent recycling by Santa Cruz off of turn one. The same from Seattle just off of turn two. Excellent block by 4-1-1. Holding that outside line from Seattle, that's fist fight. Let's and look at those points, points on the board. Yep. 18 point lead now for Santa Cruz, 110 to 92. Everybody's starting out there on that pivot line. The 
penalty box is empty. As North Carolina announcer Rocker Boy would say, we're going to have 80 wheels of blazing. <laughs> I like that one. And Time we have out? a timeout called by Santa Cruz. Interesting. Maybe they didn't like the personnel out on the board. Maybe they wanted to switch their lineup around a little. Lots of speculation we could do. Absolutely, and speculate we can because, <laughs> if, uh, as we said earlier, at the beginning of this half, Santa Cruz had 20 penalties to Seattle's 12. A couple more c have come in since then. So with 20 minutes left in this half and the game being so close, Santa Cruz may want to just refocus yeah. their jammers and their, their key uh, – starters so that later on in the day as we've seen with so many games this weekend they don't foul out in the end and just b tur basically dirt turn it into iron person roller derby where it's the same 10 going out each time that's uh, sean hale you see at the top of your screen the photographer walking across the back we love all of our derby photographers if you are a derby photographer please know that we appreciate everything you do Absolutely. We got to love all our volunteers from the NSOs, refs, and the photographers. Even our vendors here have been out, going out of their way to make everyone as comfortable and happy as they can. And we got some information from Ironic for Santa Cruz. Number 62 scored 65 points this game. That is wow. impressive. Cerberus jamming against Rival E right now. Excellent gameplay by both sides as Seattle tries to hold Santa Cruz just off of turn two. Excellent four-person wall at the start of turn one. Deathena bridging for the two packs, not wanting to give up that jammer. And this is where the conditioning comes in with pushing these skaters all weekend long. We're tired just from sitting here talking about it. So you can only imagine the level they're at right now as who gets our lead jam. We did get an illegal position on, on uh, oh, nobody's reporting. Maybe it was an out of play warning. But lead jam going to Cerberus. Still no back. initial pass for Seattle. Still in play because of the bridging, but the bulk of the skaters is in the back. Rival E trying to find a hole somewhere on this track, but we got to go to the fisheye lens to get everybody in. There Absolutely. we go. Lead jam has gone to Cerberus. Oh, that's already points on the board too. Fun grand slam for Cerberus. And we had a cover pass on rival, or I'm sorry, a cover stash with rival E. Finally through the initial pass, but calls it off. Is Santa Cruz putting five on the board? Uh, that is eight on the board. Eight on the board. Yes. Five of the first pass, three on the second pass, 118 to 92. 18 and eight is 26, a 26 point lead for Santa Cruz. Seattle flirting with that century mark, but needs to get some more points to get up there. Needs to get some more points to get in this game. Absolutely, Santa Cruz has been doing a great job at holding them at that, holding them at that score. Right now, we have Bella De Brawl going up against Tryon. Tryon, as we said earlier, with the most po with 65 points scored in this game. Excellent work on Santa Cruz. And these walls are fierce out here, Bobby. Excellent recycling by Santa Cruz, bringing back Seattle's jammer behind turn one. Meanwhile, Santa Cruz's jammer against a strong three-person wall of Seattle. Individual blocking just off of turn three with a fancy spin. Santa Cruz gets your lead jam. Yeah, too far in front, Seattle had to let try and go. Absolutely, but props to Seattle for holding on for that long. As the long as they could. Yeah, the more time they kill the more, and the more work they get to get the jammer through, the better it'll be. Bella's got the star stashed, working her way around the outside off camera. Camera showing the uh, pack at the top uh, on the back stretch. 
Backstretch and a home stretch are terms borrowed from racing. You were just an encyclopedia of useful information. <laughs> Direction of play penalty called on the Santa Cruz pivot. I didn't quite catch the number on that one. No, but, but we it were... ends in a six, I can see from here. Let's see how many skaters end in a that six. That looks like Little Killa. Only, only skater it who it does end in a six. Got a star pass. New jammer is number 10 for the white team, Wheels of Mass Destruction. Ooh, something goes flying by the camera. That was kind of cool. Yeah, Five. that was the uh, co the uh, pivot cover from Santa Cruz. An impressive launch for a pivot cover. Yeah, good loft. Uh, <laughs> five more points picked up by Santa Cruz. They have 123 points, a 31-point lead for Santa Cruz. Is that the highest lead of the games? Ironic says it is indeed the highest lead of the game. And ironic, how many jams has Santa Cruz held Seattle to 92? That is four, four jams. jams in a row. But Threatening Thunder, going to see what she can do to uh, break that streak. Pick it up lead jam right now. And unless uh, something unforetold happens, some points are going to be picked up right here. That's right. As she reengages the pack, a little spill. The block. Boom, nice hit. hit by number 26, Lil Killa, out of the box and into the side of Threatening Thunder. Springing uh, Brazil Deville from the pack. And Santa Cruz through the initial pass, uh, about to score. Each Being brought back. We have a back block, and that's called on Santa Cruz's jammer. That's going to make this a power jam for Threatening Thunder. And when you're trailing by 28 points, when you're trailing by 31 points, that's what you need. Five point pass makes it a 26 point lead. Threatening Thunder going to cut into that deficit a little bit more. Pack picking up uh, speed on the home stretch. Now heading into turn number one. Lil Lil Killa for out of the nice penalty pop. box, but doing a great work. And right, you are excellent pop. That's a ten point jam. It's a five point hop for a ten point jam. Twenty one point lead <laughs> for Santa Cruz. And Jammer is reengaging uh, just off of turn one. Thank you, ironic. Oh, a strong hit just off of turn two by number 22. High block called on Santa Cruz's Kenny the Shark. Brizella, Meanwhile. Brazella's back in play. Threatening Thunder picks up four more points, sitting on 14. I should have never mentioned anything about <laughs> that uh, scoreless jam for, uh, for Seattle because apparently Scott, someone's heard me, and they are taking it in turn. And that's a 19-point jam, it looks like. I wish you could see Ironic. He is having a great time up here. So is Tool Time. So am I. You are watching the 2018 Junior, Dur Junior Roller Derby Association Championship of the Female Division on WFTA.TV. We got a timeout here. Santa Cruz takes their final team timeout. They do have their official review left. There are 13 minutes and 50-some seconds uh, I guess we've just had a jam uh, clock alteration, brought it down to 13.51, or a game clock alteration, and Seattle sitting on 111. And while you were reporting that, I was paying attention to Seattle Galaxy girls having a bit of a powwow by their, by their uh, bench, circle, circling each other and doing some sort of chant. I, I've imagined Scott Chicken over there on the house call would know what that was. Well, was it, it a chicken dance? <laughs> na -na 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 19 points for Seattle. Ironic, is that the highest jam of the game for Seattle? It is indeed. He was just passing me that same note. Great minds think alike, and so do ours. Highest jam of the whole game for Seattle at 19 points. And now that Seattle is regrouped and had their, had their war party chance, they are ready to get back out there, and they already look fierce. One skater in the penalty box is Kenny the Shark, so a slight pack advantage for um, Seattle. Yes. And we have the Iron Rabbit out there for Seattle. Direction of play penalty coming in. We have a Seattle blocker a leaving on the direction of play penalty. Something ending with that seven, eight, nine, seven, skate, nine. Yes. An excellent name for us announcers because even if we just say the number, we're still close enough to the name. And Lee Jam going to Santa Cruz. That's Cerberus. Cerberus and Iron Rabbit. 
Cerberus, the team captain for Santa Cruz, doing some great work. Directional play penalty coming in. Seattle losing another skater. They have a place. There's only one blocker on the track right now. Uh, reinforcements coming shortly. Uh, and then Santa Cruz just lost their pivot as well. So there are as many refs as skaters on the track right now. Seven of each. And a strong, and a strong blow at turn three. Still legal as number 30 for Santa Cruz powers through, putting another five points on the board. Well, we have a penalty out there if I saw it right. Yeah, that was an illegal contact on uh, number seven skate nine. Or on seven skate nine, number seven eight nine. <laughs> <laughs> and two blockers for, uh, one blocker from each team taking the track now, re-engaging just off of the jammer line. And we have got a pile up Excellent camera work by our camera person. A perfect shot. It shows us what we can't see from our vantage point. And that's another five points for Santa Cruz. So just when Seattle was starting to get back into a 29-point lead for Santa Cruz on the back of a 15-point jam and counting. Well, there's still under 12 minutes left in this game. I'm not counting out the Galaxy girls nor yet. Nor am I, nor am I. This game started with a 22-0 run. So uh, Seattle definitely capable of putting the points back on the board. And Seattle does put one point back on the board, it looks like, putting one point on. Right now, aces are wild on the scoreboard. There are five of them, 141 to 111. <laughs> the, the screen showing that Seattle did not get a point on that last jam. Yes, but, I may be wrong. Well, I don't know. I, I tr if you saw the finger in the air, I, I would. I, I, I believe in you. Oh, that was Santa Cruz got the finger in the air. Yes, there thank it you. Is. Ironic. And right now we have number 15, Threatening Thunder, out there for Seattle. The Threatening Thunder putting some major points on the board and getting some momentum back for Seattle. And she's out there against Santa Cruz's jammer, who I can't see just quite yet. 62 trying. And lead jam goes to Seattle. Another lead jam for Threatening Thunder. That is 62 trying jamming for Santa Cruz. Oh, a strong inside block by number 90 for Santa Cruz, taking some of the momentum off of Seattle's jammer, bringing her back. New and jammer. Yes. And that's to Santa Cruz's 0-0 Mini Mayhem, who I think it, this may be the first time that we've seen that cover pass off to Mini Mayhem. Absolutely. Ah, thank you. Five points on the board for Seattle, courtesy of Threatening Thunder. Don't go anywhere after this game is over. We will be bringing you the medal ceremony. Uh, already being set up on the track behind us. Some wonderful medals. So uh, got a lot of interesting stuff going on after this game is over. Seattle picks up 10 points. That puts about 121. Santa Cruz does pick up three. That puts about a dozen, dozen. Uh, Less than 10 minutes left in this game. Look at this. 12 times 12 squared versus 11 squared. You win numbers. <laughs> Yeehaw. <laughs> And I know you you who have been watching us on WFTDA.TV, watching the JRDA champs here in Philadelphia this weekend. I know you don't want to go back to work. Well, guess what? Neither do we because we will be here tomorrow for World Cup. You can find that on twitch.tv slash WFTDA, so be sure to check that out. In the meantime, what did I miss, Bobby? Bella de Brawl's already got lead jam. Cerberus is jamming for Santa Cruz. It's a hit it and quit it jam. Let's count the points. Two, uh, two points for Seattle. One, two, three is Seattle's score. One, four, four is Santa Cruz's score. Nine minutes, just under nine minutes left in the game. Still a really close game. Both teams fighting fierce until the very end. One wants to go home with the gold. The other one is just going to have to settle for silver. Settle for silver. That's, hang your head high with, uh, with a silver. Yeah, There's. how awful. 4-1-1 <laughs> is the jammer on the white team. That is fist fight. Fist fight has picked up lead for Seattle. Jammer on the black team is number 62. Uh, that is trying. A successful pass by Seattle, putting five on the board. Okay. 
Santa Cruz still trying to get through the initial pass with some fancy footwork by fist fights. Excellent blocking by Santa Cruz, but gets through five more points. You can see as the camera pans what great crowds we have here for this matchup. And we have a cover pass, I believe, off to Mini Mayhem again. Yes, a Mi Mini Mayhem does have the star cover as Seattle sends a their pivot to the penalty box. Ten points on the board for Seattle, and it's only an 11-point game right now. It is definitely getting exciting. Seattle down Mad Taco, their pivot. Tryon completes the initial pass. A little miscommunication there, I think, from the bench coach to the bench. No miscommunicating that excellent block just off of the jammer line, holding up. Oh, what a hop! Sticks the landing. We have a one-point game. Alpha just one jam, 19 points on the board. We have a lead change. Points haven't been put on the board yet, but she passed a skater. That's right, and we'll know that soon enough, but still with 11 seconds left in this jam, fist fight, putting something Whoa, together. Hold on. But points also on the board for Santa Cruz. Four points on the board for Santa Cruz puts them at 148, 22 points for Seattle. We had a lead change very briefly, but then a lead change, the lead changed twice in that jam. Santa Cruz back on top, 148 to 145, a three point game. And I'm gonna have to check with Ironic, but that is at least three points higher than Seattle's highest jam of 19 points for the whole game. All right, on the jammer line right now, threatening thunder for Seattle, forced to the outside, gonna have to re-engage. Picking up lead jammer is Bruzella DeVille for Santa Cruz. Pack now in retrograde as the Seattle jammers taken all the way to turn number three, all the way to the back stretch to have to re-engage this pack. And she gets through, Bella Bruzella DeVille putting five more on the board. This crowd is on its on the edge of its seat, yeah. excited. Sorry, I just realized I was too <laughs> as Santa Cruz sends their pivot to the penalty box. And that's number 26, Lil Killa, who may be in trouble because I saw her go yeah. in earlier and she may be sitting at six, unofficially of course. And with five and a half minutes left in this game, anything can still happen, but DeVille still putting those points on the board. Yeah, another five point pass. Track cut, power jam, Bruzella DeVille. Threatening thunder to the penalty box on the track cut, so Bruzella DeVille is gonna enjoy this power jam. As their pivot rejoins them for Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz now back up to full strength. And just when Seattle, Seattle had briefly taken the lead, but now we're back to an 18 point lead for Santa Cruz. And Jammer is standing for Seattle. Threatening Thunder. Back out, out on the track. Strong, Gromshell's wall. Excellent inside block. That's number 26, Lil Killa. Number 15 on the black team is Bunny and Collide, forcing, uh, Bonnie and Collide, forcing uh, Threatening Thunder to the infield, making a re-engage but able to complete the initial pass before the jam is called. How about that? Well, Seattle puts 22 on the board. Santa Cruz answers with 23. Wow. You, you want to put 22 on the board? I'm going to put 23 on the board. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Sorry, I come from New York. <laughs> Actually, well, it's I was, okay. We won't hold it against you. <laughs> I was born in Seattle. I was born in King County Hospital. I grew up in Southern California. So I got a little bit of an attachment to both of these teams as well. Absolutely. 171 to 145, under four minutes left to play in the game. Santa Cruz cannot stop the clock except by using an official review. Seattle has one timeout and their official review remaining. 26-point game. That's going to play a, to play a role later on if there's any kind of lead change. Seattle still with the option to cool down their player, but right now red hot number 20, Seattle, Bella DeBraw. 
And who's the jammer for Santa Cruz, Tool Time? That's Sugar Smacks, and that's the first time I've seen her with the cover on. If I, I believe so, too. Uh, ironic could double-check us on that, but I think that is Sugar Smacks' first time donning the spangled helmet cover. At least for this exciting second half. Yeah. No. 5-3. So five points picked up by Seattle, 21 point game, 171 to 150, just under three minutes left to play. We would be absolutely remiss if we did not give some love to our hosts for this amazing tournament. We are hosted by Philly Roller Derby Juniors and by the Junior Roller Derby Association. So much love to the hosts of this tournament. Absolutely, you have made, my, speaking for myself and I'm sure other officials, you've made us feel very at home with ex an excellent area for us to work in an excellent area for us to get food, actual yeah, they feed food. Us with Chinese food today for dinner. And it's people food. And we have number 62 trying for Santa Cruz with your lead jam going up against fist fight. 411 for Seattle. Thank you. <laughs> Two minutes left in the game and I'm finally memorizing numbers. Four point pass picked up by Seattle. So although they're not in the lead, they're putting on points. Uh, they're not, they don't have lead jam, they're putting on points. Referees conferring about the points before points get put on the board for Santa Cruz. No, uh, four points each. 175 to 154 remains a 21-point lead for Santa Cruz. One minute and 40-some seconds left to play. Uh, white team stopping the clock. Is it a timeout? It is a timeout. Both teams have their official reviews remaining. One minute, 44 seconds showing on the clock. Well, we may have some confusion. We we see a timeout, a f official review called on the house, so they may have seen something that we didn't. You're mishearing them. They said each team has their official review ah, remaining. Ah, yes, thank you. I stole it directly from them and said it on the air. <laughs> Who are our house announcers out there today? Why, it looks like George Carnage. And Scott Chicken, who has put together some amazing information packets for us, which have been serving us very well very this well. year at Champs. Serving us very well last year at Champs in Loveland, Colorado. Some credit for that. Got to go to Brett Rogers, one of the executives on the Junior Roller Derby Association. Yes. Uh, solicited all the information from the teams. Had a little packet we sent out. We wanted to clarify pronouns. We wanted to clarify what you've been doing, how to pronounce your name, who your coaches are, what your record is. Teams responded uh, to uh, Brett's... Uh, communications and uh, Scott Chicken assembled these packages for us and it makes us sound really smart. It does. Well, you don't need help sounding smart, but some of us need all the help we can get. Uh, you know what you're talking about. I just know big words. Meanwhile, <laughs> out on the track, Brazil de Ville jamming against fist fight. Excellent walls just off the start. 101 for Santa Cruz doing some work against a strong three-person wall. Like a top 40 radio station, the hits just keep on coming. Absolutely, and this is definitely starting to get physical. And let's also keep in mind that these, these skaters have not only had a very hard game today, but very hard games this entire weekend. So we got to commend the coaches for the physical conditioning they put these athletes through. Four we have penalty a on penalty. the uh, Santa Cruz skater that's reporting to the penalty box. That's Double Deuce Kenny the Shark. And look. Yes, thank you, camera person. Santa Cruz's jammer just pushing through, almost gets through, but gets your lead jam. Oh, we got a high block. It's not only a lead jam, it is a power jam. There is only 35 seconds left in the game. There are 49 seconds left on the jam clock. So with a proper strategy, Santa Cruz has won the game. And they realize that they're just gonna stand, she's gonna stand right there until the clock hits zero, or maybe negative five, just to be sure, because the scoreboard does not control, the jam timer's clock controls. Absolutely, but. Seattle feel, figuring it out, they're gonna force her out, at least make her play some roller derby. She's and having none of it. She's skating in retrograde back to turn number one. Not today, Seattle. 
So Seattle's streak of first place finishes has come to a close. Santa Cruz with their first first place finish from sixth to fifth to second to first in four successive championships. Your champion team, Santa Cruz, 175 to 154 is your unofficial final. And what an amazing game we're seeing. We saw here today Santa Cruz, as you could see on the camera, made incredibly excited they as we said they played each other last year well, we got a brief adjustment to the score Santa Cruz picks up two more points 107 to 154 a 27 point victory for Santa Cruz that I was, I was just about to say and how appropriate they would end on a scoreless gym because we've had so many of them but then Santa Cruz picked up two more points and so I can't say that absolutely but again Santa Cruz Grom shells uh, going up against Seattle again another victory and if we remember correctly Seattle has played the last time Santa Cruz played Seattle it was one win one loss well one more win and where better than JRDA champs here in Philadelphia and the points have gone way down both teams uh, the winning team had more than 200 points in those previous matchups really close uh, 177 and 154 um, uh, my fellow announcer has been Tool Time. I'm Bobby Narco. Our producer has been Ironic. Got to give some love to Ben Speedbump and Kimberly Timbers. Uh, <laughs> JR, the Junior Roller Derby Association, and WFTA.TV. This is Bobby Narco wishing and you peace, love, and roller derby. And I'm Tool Time reminding you that we do still have the Junior World Cup coming up tomorrow on Twitch.TV. Go to Twitch.TV backslash WFTDA to get your free pass to watch both days for free. And Signing off. Come on back in about 10 minutes for the medal ceremony. Thank you.